today's world, you said like organic is best. So do you think it is possible? Because we don't all live next to farmer's markets and we can't all go right. and get right. like, Absolutely. The, the, the best food. Do you think it's possible to get all the nutrition from whole foods? Is there a place for supplements and what kind of supplements would be required, do you think? Yeah, great question. So to be clear, Richard, I, I completely agree with you. And in fact, my career really has been devoted to disparities in public health and trying to pe help people who most need help. The simple fact is, you know, people who listen to podcasts don't tend to be about nutrition or health, don't tend to be the people who most need help. I mean, just being honest about it. So this audience probably can, you know, find produce when they want and probably can select organic when they want. And I'm talking to those of you who are listening right now, but we should all understand that most people don't have those options. And, you know, so any produce is better than no produce and, and you know, doing the best you can to uh, approximate um, a diet made up mostly of real food. To be clear, it is possible for most people to do that. And it's not because they, you know, have access to money. It's because it, it really is skill based. So, for example, if you know that beans and lentils are, are good for you and can substitute for meat, they're less expensive, better for the planet, which we should talk about, by the way, Richard, that food being good for both people and planet, critical issue. Um, extremely nutritious, uh, satiating on a minimum of calories. I mean, everything about them is great, and they're available almost anywhere. You can get them in a can or a bag. and. Uh, for that matter, frozen produce is nutritionally equivalent to fresh produce, not on a go. So it's a different conversation, but there are definitely ways to overcome those barriers. But when you say not everybody can get organic, absolutely true. So just want to acknowledge the importance of that issue and disparities and economic barriers and access barriers and so forth. On the matter of supplements, yes, I think there is a place for supplements, even if you get diet just right. And I can use myself as a case study. So, you know, I, I practice what I preach. I've had an optimal diet, certainly my entire adult life. And I, I don't, you know, objectively measured my diet quality is about as high as you can go. I still take a probiotic because in the modern world, we have introduced antibiotics into so many aspects of the food supply that some degree of exposure to antibiotics in the food is all but inevitable. So too some potential exposure to residual traces of herbicides and pesticides, which are ubiquitous in the environment. And even with an optimal diet, those things can inhibit the growth of the healthy bacterial colonies in the gut. And a probiotic supplement is an insurance policy against that. I eat a plant predominant diet and I am plant exclusive much of the time. So I will periodically supplement with vitamin B12 which is at low levels in most plant foods. Um, interestingly, B12 in animal foods comes from plants because it ultimately comes from soil. But in many parts of the world where we produce our crops these days, the soil is relatively depleted in B12. And so plants are dilute in B12 and a supplement for people who have plant exclusive or nearly plant exclusive diets is generally a good idea. And then there's vitamin D, which is probably the most universal recommendation. And, and we should also recognize, by the way, that fortification is supplementation by another means, right? So when public health authorities recognize that a nutrient supplement is of such universal importance that pretty much everybody should get it, they just put it in the food supply. So we put folate into grain products because everybody can benefit from supplemental folate. And we have put vitamin D into a wide array of products because most people need more. So it's really a different way of achieving the same thing, whether you take a supplement because you're not eating fortified foods or you take the fortified foods, that's a supplement just coming with the food. But vitamin D supplementation is almost universally needed. And I think this is important for a couple of reasons. First, it tells us that the judiciousness of supplementing your diet with select nutrients is not an indictment of the quality of your diet. You can have an optimal diet and still benefit from select supplements that fill gaps left by your diet. Why would there be gaps left for vitamin D? Because vitamin D is not a nutrient. Vitamin D is a hormone. And the human body makes vitamin D with exposure to sunlight. So the problem is modern living. We wear clothes. We don't all live on the equator. 
we're not outside in the sun all the time. And when we are out in the sun, we wear hats and sunscreen because we're worried about skin cancer. So our relationship to sunlight is very different than our ancestral relationship. Our ancestors did not need nutrient vitamin D. They manufactured it in their skin from exposure to sunlight. Because we're not doing that, we need to do an end run around our native physiology and consume vitamin D as a nutrient. When you consider all of that, it stands to reason that getting it as a supplement to your diet makes sense because it was never, we were never adapted really to get it from food in the first place. We're supposed to be getting it from sunlight. There are arguments for other nutrients too. Omega-3, people who don't eat fatty fish routinely may not be getting the optimal intake of essential fatty acids in the omega-3 class. And you can get those from algae. There are algae-based supplements. I like that. I take one of those too. Uh, I used to eat fish quite routinely. I eat it a lot less because frankly, we're destroying fisheries and destroying the ocean. So eating wild salmon may be good for me, but it's not good for the salmon. So I eat fish rarely these days and very selectively. So I take an algae-based omega-3. So I'm getting the long chain omega-3 fatty acids, EPA and DHA, but I'm getting them from a highly sustainable source, which by the way, is where the fish get them in the first place. Algae are kind of at the bottom of that food chain. They produce the long chain omega threes. And then on and on it goes. So, you know, if, if you're trying to protect yourself against an infectious disease threat, there may be a case for supplementing zinc. I had been doing that during the COVID pandemic as an example. Final comments though. So, so one, the judicious use of supplements is not an indictment of diet quality. You can have an optimal diet of many different varieties, and there's still a case for select supplementation. Two, supplement, not substitute. Right? Taking any combination of supplements does not substitute for the health benefits of a high-quality diet. And three, the entire enterprise should be personalized because what nutrients you should take to supplement your diet depends on what's in your diet. And one of the things that we focused on early with Diet ID is our ability to get at your intake of 150 nutrients in 60 seconds. And that kind of information should inform your supplement choices. Where you see gaps, it's an invitation to think about either improving your diet or taking a supplement or both. So I think the enterprise should be personalized.